Hi, I'm Randy Brandt, Project Manager for Quadriga, now known as AppleWorks 4.0. On this video today, I would like to demonstrate to you some of the new features that have been implemented in AppleWorks 4.0 and show you how to best use them. Joining me will be Dan Vercade, the other programmer involved in the project. We hope you enjoy the video. Most of you are probably familiar with the timeout series of enhancements to AppleWorks. For those of you who are not, let me give you a brief little overview of what timeout is. The so timeout engine was created by Alan Bird in 1987 to allow new modules to be accessed from within AppleWorks. By simply pressing the open Apple escape key combination, you bring up a timeout menu which allows you to access these applications. For example, we can select timeout grammar and bring in a grammar checker thoroughly integrated into the AppleWorks word processor, allowing us to check the grammar of the document. In this example, we see that an extra comma was marked, and we can ask the program to correct that. As soon as it's corrected, we press the space bar, exit out, and we're back in the word processor. We never really left AppleWorks. We merely brought in a new player, as in a basketball team calling a timeout to bring in a substitute we brought in a new application to enhance features in the word processor. For those of you who are familiar with Timeout from the past, you'll be excited to know that it's now built in, slightly improved, and much easier to install Timeout applications. The Timeout installer that's built into AppleWorks 4.0 makes it easy to add new applications. In the past, you had to run another program outside of AppleWorks in order to add these new applications. Now, with a few simple keystrokes, a new timeout application can be added. Let me demonstrate. The new Apple F feature jumps us into file activities. Instead of copy or move files, we move to install init's or timeout files. When this option is selected, we can choose the directory in which the applications are located. There we go. We have a list of three applications. Let's pick one of them, the new Ultra Macros compiler. When I press open Apple return, it installs it with no questions asked automatically placing it in the correct subdirectory in the hard drive so that next time AppleWorks is started up, Timeout will find the new application. Another feature we've built into Quadriga, which before was only available if you purchased the Timeout Ultra Macros package, is mouse control. This popular feature is now included with the ability to configure the options as necessary. Looking at the screen, we see the mouse enabled option. We change it to yes. Mouse horizontal, vertical, and button delay control the sensitivity of the mouse. When we exit the standard settings and enter a file, we then have use of the mouse. Pressing the button allows us to scroll at a high rate of speed in the spreadsheet, in the word processor. One of my favorite features of AppleWorks 4.0 is the ability to control several features by use of the clock. Time-based options allow us to both establish a delay for blanking the screen and for auto-saving files. The screen blanker simply turns the screen to black for now, but in the future we will be releasing a disk with many exciting screen savers that do things like uh, Pac-Man appearing and gobbling up the screen, uh, melting module that uh, your screen falls off to the bottom, and many other exciting features designed by Matt Reimer, the author of Platinum Paint. The auto save feature simply saves your files after a predetermined number of minutes if the file has been changed. This allows you to, for example, set it to 10 minutes, and if you're typing and you've worked for 10 minutes since you last saved, the file will automatically save and return you back to the document to continue working. Another one of the timeout applications that we've incorporated into AppleWorks 4.0 is Triple Desktop. This allows you to have three different desktops of 12 files each for a total of 36. Looking at the screen, we can see that Desktop 1 has no files. Simply pressing Tab switches us to the second desktop, which has three files. Tab again, the third desktop has one. Moving to the Add Files menu, we see that the total number of files in a directory is listed along with the desktop number and the files currently on that desktop. Selecting files increments that number, limiting us to 12 files on that desktop. However, we can press Apple D and cycle through the various desktops until we get the one we desire. 
Let's add some files to desktop one. I'll pick the first three files, press return. The files are added to the desktop. Notice that the line number of the file being loaded is given at the bottom, showing the progress. When the files are loaded, we can then tab through the desktops. If we'd like to see all of them, simply pressing Apple V gives us a screen displaying all three desktops, the types of the files, and also the total size that each desktop uses up. In our effort to make AppleWorks 4.0 as easy to use as possible, we added several new commands to the Open Apple Q menu. Open Apple Q is significant because pressing that keystroke gets you to the desktop index from anywhere in AppleWorks. No matter how many menu levels deep, no matter where you are in a file, you always get to the desktop index with only one keystroke. Adding commands to this feature makes it easy to get anywhere in AppleWorks in a hurry. For example, if we press Apple F at the Q menu, we'd instantly jump to the File Activities menu, which adds many features, such as ability to copy files. We'll discuss that in detail later. Open Apple Q followed by Open Apple D puts us at the Disk Activities menu, giving us the ability to copy disks, rename disks, and the like. Again, we will discuss that later. Pressing Open Apple Q followed by Open Apple S takes us to the Standard Settings menu, allowing us to change various settings as to how our AppleWorks functions, tailoring it to our own needs. One of the improvements we've made in AppleWorks 4.0 is enhancing the add files. Now, when you go to add files to a desktop, any text files on the directory are displayed along with the AppleWorks files. Pressing return with a text file selected loads it in as an AppleWorks word processor file. We can make changes to the file. We can change the name of the file if we wish. Now, sample. And when we press Apple S, this file is saved back to the hard drive. If we go to add files again, you'll see the word sample at the top of the screen. The file was saved as a text file even though we were inside of AppleWorks. This is made possible by a new menu option in the standard settings. If we go to the miscellaneous menu, at the bottom you can see save text files as text. If that option is disabled, saving the file would save it as a normal word processor file. So we've given you maximum flexibility in this area. Another new feature in AppleWorks 4.0 is the Add Files ability to sort directories. Normally, files are listed, sorted according to word processor, database, and spreadsheet order. Now, by pressing Apple A, the Arrange option, we can also select Name, which sorts them by name alphabetically regardless of file type. Sorting them by type puts them in the original order we see. Sorting by size, again, sorts them from the largest file to the smallest file, descending order. The final option allows us to sort by date. This one's especially handy if you want to see files which have changed recently since it shows the newest files first and sorts them in order to the oldest files.